Hey guys, it's been such a long time since I've done an art video, so I'm going to do this video that's been requested a lot by you guys. And this is going to be a video where I just show you guys art I've done in the past. So this, these will be projects that I did in school and a little bit outside of school. I had fun with a lot of these projects and I'll show you some of my favorites. So I hope you guys enjoy, thank you for watching, and yeah. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this piece of art I did in the summer between grade 9 and 10 so I was just heading off into my year at a different school for grade 10. I really loved mixing color with black and white. I decided to recreate the cover of Lips Touched by Lanny Taylor and I just love this art. I just love the cover of this book and I really wanted to recreate it. So what I did is I used acrylic paint for the eyes and the lips because that's what really pops out on this cover for me and I decided to do that and leave everything else in kind of grey slash black and white scale. I thought it would make it more interesting and yeah so this is the first thing. This is a painting I did in grade 9. It was kind of like the first big painting project I did in school and it really made me love painting on a whole new level. So we had to recreate a famous painting by a really famous artist and I chose Picasso and I chose this painting because I thought it was really interesting and I thought the way his body was kind of uh, posed in the picture was really interesting and I just thought it would be really fun to paint and that I would learn a lot. This is probably one of my favorite things I've done uh, in school and I just thought it was such an awesome project. It took me a long time to do but I was very happy with the result. Alright, so for this project we had to pick an animal to draw. We had to pretty much use a fine tip permanent marker to create all the lines that form the fur and the eyes. It really made you look at the fur in a different angle because sometimes when you look at fur you just kind of color and do darker patches whereas we created patches using lines and it varied through the thickness and the thinness of the lines so it created a really cool um, result. So this next art piece I did was in grade 8 and it was using all pastels and we had to recreate a famous painting uh, by a Canadian artist so I, choose, I chose Emily Carr and this piece is called The Big Raven I believe. It took me such a long time and it was so hard because the paintings were done with acrylic and you can't really manipulate pastels like you can with acrylics so it was definitely hard and it's not like you can mix pastels too. Sometimes when you mix too many colors it comes out looking dirty. So it was hard to get the exact color but I was happy with the way it turned out. I was only in grade 8 and I was very happy that I finished it. So the next thing I'm going to show you is one of the coolest things I think I've done in terms of how it was put together because the project was all about making sort of a puzzle piece and incorporating a drawing within the puzzle pieces. So what you're looking at right now is the drawing I did and if you look closely there's black outlines of a puzzle piece that are all put together and this is called a tessellation drawing. So pretty much they're all put together and I incorporated the girl's face within the grooves of the puzzle piece and I incorporated all the colors I love and I just wanted the hair to fall into the grooves with the puzzle pieces. If you look closely, you can look at it as a picture or you can look at it as a puzzle. So I thought that was very cool. So the drawing you're going to see next is a drawing I did of my shoe. And pretty much we were told to take off one of our shoes, put it on the table, and draw what you see. I chose to draw my shoe in all black and white using charcoal and then just have the studs in a bold color so it made it more interesting. And the shoes I had on that day were all purple so the color you see on the stones is what actual what actually the color of the whole shoe was. So I thought it was fun and I was so thankful that I was actually wearing nice shoes that day because if I was wearing flip flops that would be so boring so I was glad I wore an interesting shoe. And I think it's a fun project for a lot of people to do, just draw regular objects around the house or a cool article of clothing or something and make it interesting somehow. So this next thing I did was a still life using fruit. I just took a giant eggplant, a kiwi, a pear, a lemon, and a pomegranate, and a lime and put them all together because I found that those were the most colorful things I had and I just thought it was cool because it taught you how to create textures using pencil crayons. The next thing you are going to see is a poster I did for a contest and it was a contest to create a poster that represented 
uh, what Remembrance Day means to Canadians and how we can remember the soldiers that lost their lives. This is probably like one of the first big contests I entered. I incorporated a man in a uniform blowing in a trumpet and everything that to me symbolizes Remembrance Day is coming out of the trumpet. So I incorporated a dove, poppies, and some crosses and the phrase lest we forget. The dove kind of represents freedom and peace and I thought that it went well with the idea of what Remembrance Day means to Canadians and what we want to remember on the day of Remembrance Day. I obviously could have improved on the shading but this is an only grade 8 so that's something to kind of be proud of. came in first place on the first three levels within this competition and then when it came to the fourth level I came in second so I didn't move on to the fifth level but yeah I was super proud of myself and it just felt like a huge accomplishment I had to do this still life for the audition and had to be in black and white and had to be a certain size so that's why it's so darn big so I took some items from around the house and I just put them together and drew what I saw and I chose a lot of items with textures so it would make it more interesting so yeah this took me a couple of hours and it was hard to get the texture of the wood that you see in the vases but I had a lot of fun with it next is a painting I did when I was 11 years old and I went into a studio and the woman kind of gave me guidelines and helped me along the way and I learned a lot from that. She gave me tips and I followed along and I did what I could at the time. So all I did was I painted one eye and had the hair covering the other one and those papers you see as leaves are actually like scrapbooking papers so I incorporated those to create a textured feeling and this type of painting is called mixed media where you incorporate two types of mediums, uh, mediums I mean or more so I had paint and the paper so yeah, it was really fun and I love drawing faces and hair so I did that and some big flowers. Alright, so that was my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're interested in seeing two more of my paintings, I made videos in the past where I showed those two paintings so I'm going to leave the links in the down bar so you can guys can check those out if you haven't seen them yet. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, if you have any more requests, I'd love to hear them. And yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you guys are having an awesome summer. Uh, I'll see you guys later and I'll talk to you soon as well. Bye.